these men are making a massive truck bomb. They aren't terrorists. They're explosive experts, determined to settle a debate more than a decade old. And I gotta make sure my distance is right. Oklahoma City, 1995. Terrorists destroy a huge section of this federal building. 168 die. Government investigators determined that a single truck bomb did this. The single bomb does explain all of the damage that occurred to the building. Others believe there were additional bombs planted inside the building. There had to have been demolition charges in it to, to have collapsed the way it did. For the first time on television, we'll recreate the full-sized truck bomb and explode it. Three, two, one. Experts will measure its destructive power to see if the official story is blown away by the ultimate conspiracy test. In a pre-9-11 world, the terrorist bombing of the Murrah Federal Building shocks the nation in 1995, and years later, controversy still rages. On one side, the official government investigators. The entire amount of damage that occurred in this building can be explained by the single bomb that went off uh, just outside the Murrah Building. Danny Deffenbaugh led the FBI's investigation. I am totally confident we have the whole story. But many eyewitnesses and some explosive experts are just as convinced that more than one bomb exploded that day. I knew instantly that you could not bring that building down the way they said they did. There were other explosive devices in that building that actually brought the building down. With strong opinions come intense emotions from both sides. I think they screwed up an investigation badly or they were intentionally covering it up. I don't know which. It is outrageous, it's ludicrous, and how dare they? Shame on them. Can an unprecedented experiment settle this heated debate? Morning, Oklahoma City. The first few minutes of the workday are uneventful. About 370 people are hard at work in the Alfred P. Murrah building. It's a federal building with offices for government agencies like alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, social security, and the IRS. There is also a daycare center. It was a beautiful day. It was a springtime morning. I got to my desk and uh, put in a couple hours of work. Went up to my office and started to have a meeting at my desk around 9 o'clock. But at 9.02 a.m., an explosion rips into the Alfred P. Murrah building. The blast is felt 30 miles away. Just after 9 o'clock Central Time in Oklahoma City, an explosive device which is... Initial reports say around 20 people are known dead. But as the coverage continues and camera angles change, it becomes clear to TV viewers that more than the facade is missing. Wow. Holy cow. About a third about a third of the building has been blown away. Uh, this is just devastating. I was standing about roughly six feet from where it dropped off. I had two buddies that their desk was right across the aisle from where mine was. And I got up and I walked over, I looked around it to see if they had made it and they were gone. And uh, while I was doing that, the young lady took a picture of the building and I'm in that picture. I looked to my left and the floor was broken off about two feet to my left and behind me about two feet and my credenza was gone, my bookcase was gone and I was just sitting on a ledge. At first, nobody knows what caused the explosion. The man in front of me said, what's happening? And I said, I think a gas line exploded. Then a critical discovery. Within an hour, authorities find the mangled axle of a truck. The FBI quickly deduces the cause of the explosion, a vehicle bomb. When you find a rear axle that is over 100 yards away and it has explosive damage, it had to have gotten there somehow. 
Finding the Axle jumpstarts the FBI investigation. The Axle has a unique identifying number. It's traceable and links the Axle to a truck owned by the Ryder Truck Rental Company. Rental records, witness accounts, and hotel logs lead to the arrests of Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols. A flurry of additional evidence is found linking them to the crime. Their motive? To lash out at government policies and practices by attacking a federal building housing offices for the Secret Service, ATF, and the IRS. The government contended that Tim McVeigh and Terry Nichols uh, built the bomb. McVeigh delivered that, parked it in front of the Murrow building. He ignited the uh, debt cord, left the truck. The bomb exploded and the tragedy started. As the smoke clears, video from the news helicopters reveals an anomaly. There are two distinct areas of damage. A big one in front, apparently from the truck bomb, but also a second area towards the back. There's always the possibility of additional bombs inside the building, but uh, when I saw this uh, lack of complete symmetry, that was immediately something that uh, uh, I felt needed to be investigated. Dr. Corley is a forensic structural engineer with over 42 years' experience studying the vulnerabilities of concrete. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, hired Corley to lead their investigation of the Murrah Building. His job? To forensically analyze the building's catastrophic failure. The team's initial focus is the crater left by the truck bomb. The FBI supplies the team with the crater's depth and circumference. Based on crater size, we can calculate the size of a bomb. We were able to take that information and calculate what damage a bomb of that size would do to the building, and then could calculate how much of the building would be expected to collapse as a result of that. What Dr. Corley discovers is astounding. The design of the Murrah building, like thousands around the U.S., is especially vulnerable to truck bomb attacks. The Murrah building was designed to have an open entrance on the north side where a street ran very near the building. They accomplished the open area by leaving out every other column on the first two levels. This means that for each street level column McVeigh can destroy, three support columns above it will fall. So all three of these columns were uh, loaded to a level that would cause them to fail and collapse. Dr. Corley says the building's collapse was so turbulent, it caused the asymmetrical damage. Based on the information that our team was able to collect at the site and based on our calculations, any theories about additional bombs going off are not supported. The single bomb, uh, does explain all of the damage that occurred to the building. But Corley's report has several detractors. It was technically impossible to collapse the way it did from one single point of initiation. Next, is there a cover-up in the Oklahoma City bombing? Conspiracy advocates present their evidence. Mm -hmm. 